Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Darren. I hope you're all well and having a good Stitch Week. So today, we're doing Stitch With Me number two. I'm gonna be working on this one, which is Savannah Spirit. And I'm up here. <laughs> I've got a long way to go before I get one of these. <laughs> so, let's get you zoomed in. First things first, new accessory. So my new splints finally turned up. So this one only goes up to the that knuckle. Way more comfortable than the other one, and not as heavy. But this one I, I can wear all the time. I take it off when I go for a shower, because it just falls off anyway, because of the soap. But other than that, I keep it on. Which is what I'm meant to be doing anyway. It's nice and muggy here today. Let's have the fan on full, but I've turned it down a bit, so you can hear me. It's meant to be up to 33, but the humidity is quite high, so it's going to make it feel a lot hotter. And then we're in for a heat wave, so... Tomorrow, I'm meant to be at 36, 37 degrees. And then if it's going to be as humid as it is, it's probably going to feel over 40, which is going to be fun. Well, <laughs> so yeah, not looking forward to that at all. So tomorrow when I get up, first thing that's happening is I'm putting aircon on. I'm not waiting till it warms up like I normally do. <laughs> it's just going straight on. I'm going to keep the house as cool as I possibly can. So, I've got some work update, even though I've not been there. It's a good thing having Shane working there. I can find things out. I'll go through that. Got some questions. So we'll go through those as well. I apologise as well. I may have to keep pausing this and coming back. Because the threads for this I haven't got all sorted out yet. So I've only got certain ones sorted out into floss drops. And then I've got a bag full of them. Of ones that need to be done. So I may be pausing this so I can... Sort the thread out if I go into a different colour that I haven't already got sorted. So just so that you are aware. So work update. The two guys that are working on my saw have broken my saw. Well, should I say did break my saw. So as I mentioned, my saw is an automatic saw. So it has rollers inside the machine that pulls the wood through. And it's got two lots, one on the bottom, one on the top. The one on the bottom of the main ones, I'll pull it through. The ones on the top of the one, just to clamp it down. And apparently, they broke the ones on the bottom. They wouldn't pull the wood through. And apparently, it's done it loads of times before. So, well, I've worked there almost four years now. And I says, and since I've worked on that saw, it's never done that, ever. Sometimes the top ones don't drop, but that's easily fixed. But yeah, it's never done that to me. Apparently, it's, it does it. It used to do it all the time. So they had the mechanic, saw mechanic out, and he showed him how to reset it. Apparently, there's a reset option. So I did not know about that one. So he came out and sorted that out. So they're going to show me how to do that when I go back to it. Oh, yes. So, I was like, you could have broke it really good. Apologies. You could have broke it really well. And then I won't have to worry about that and get a new saw. So, one of the saws that was broken... 
that's been fixed. But not with the parts that came off it. It's a completely new part now, apparently. They've changed it all around. Because the ones that we used to have on there, they no longer do. or well, they can't fix. It was going to cost too much to get a second-hand one brought in from wherever. <clears throat> so his has been fixed. Uh, the guy whose brother got sacked, or brother-in-law, whatever, got sacked. He's getting another new saw. So they've just spent all this money doing up his saw that splits wood. And now he's getting another brand new saw. So he had he used to work on two different types of saws. So one was the one that split the wood and one was one for uh, docking wood. So apparently they're getting rid of the one that docks the wood and the one that they've just had done up and they're replacing it with a brand new saw I don't know what kind of saw it is. Uh, some sort of splitting saw, apparently. So they're replacing it with that. And getting rid of the other two. It's like, hang on a minute. They've just spent all this money doing the other saw up. And then they were meant to be getting me a new saw. But instead, they've now got this other guy another new saw. And they're getting rid of the one that they just spent all this money on doing up. And it's like... I won't. I will get a new saw. I will. <laughs> Don't know when, but I'm going to get one. <laughs> Apparently the main boss's work was asking when I was going to be back. I was asking Shane. And Shane's like, I don't know. He's meant to be getting a phone call this week from... The boss or HR lady, one of them. I said, but that's all I know. As to whether or not he's coming back. But if not, another, what, five weeks? Four weeks? Five weeks? <laughs> so I'm hoping they don't get back to me. But we will see. The new kid that's meant to be starting hasn't started yet. I don't know whether he will be starting. So, I don't know what's happening with him. Shane's broke his truck. <laughs> that's getting fixed today. So today's Thursday. So that's getting fixed today. So with Shane's truck, he's got what's called a lazy axle. Or something like that. So when there's a certain amount of weight on it, this axle drops and it's like another set of wheels uh, to give the truck more stability or and to help support the load or something like that. Well, one of the airbags that works that popped. <laughs> so that's getting fixed this morning. And normally the guy who does all the loads for taking out and stuff like that that boss he if one of the trucks is out of action for any reason he normally walks around with face on for the rest of the day because he can't get his loads out that he wants to get out and what have you because he's really money orientated um but apparently he wasn't that bad he says do you think you can it'll be all right to drive with just two packs on because there was a one of the companies we delivered to was in desperate need of two packs and she says yeah he says as long as the his axle doesn't need to come down, he says it'll be fine. So, that made that boss happy. So Shane had to take these two packs to where they needed to get them. So the, the main boss doesn't know it was broken. <laughs> Because by the time Shane finished work yesterday, the bus wasn't back. He left at half past nine in the morning to go up to one site, which is probably one of the furthest away that we, we go to. It takes a good six hours to get there and back. Um, and he left at half past nine, and at half past three, he still wasn't back. 
<laughs> so he doesn't know that Shane's broke the truck. Well, not the airbag popped. But I'm sure many will do soon. The two guys that are working on my saw are the guys that are normally do the sorting and they still haven't received any wood through. <laughs> so they're not happy because I've got to stay on my saw. It's like, yeah, because you've got to do some work for a change. <laughs> I don't know what happened with the, the other lad, the one who got told off for his going, having extended breaks and stuff like that. Shane hasn't said whether he was back at work or not. I'll have to find that out. I'm just out of view there, sorry. So I've had no more critters fall on me. <laughs> I did have to chase Tiger last night to get a gecko off him. He was in the, it was, what, it was bedtime, going to bed. And uh, what is the bedroom? And he was in a funny crouching way. And then all of a sudden he took off. I was like, okay, and then Kitty followed suit. And I was like, right, okay, he's got something. So, followed him into the back area, and I was like, what you got? And he would not let me see what he had. It took me ages, and I just saw this gecko's head popping out of his mouth. He was like, oh, great, he's got a gecko. So then I had to shout Shane to grab me a tub and try and get this gecko off of Tiger. <laughs> which I managed to do, and then I've got this gecko under my hand while trying to hold Tiger with the other hand, which is not easy. I'm waiting for Shane to come with a tub, and Shane brings his massive tub, and it's like, Shane, it's a gecko, I only need a small tub. <laughs> and then I just handed it to me with the lid on, it's like, yeah, and how am I going to get the lid off? Ding back. Oh, yeah, they took the lid off. Got this gecko, threw him outside. And it's like, right, this gecko's dropped his tail, so where the hell's this tail? So I then had to go searching around the bedroom to try and find this tail so the cats didn't get hold of the tail. Because I don't know if they're very good for cats eating geckos and gecko tails. <laughs> Mind you, Tiger has had one gecko before, but it was only a baby. And he seemed to survive. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, so that was a fun end to the day. At the moment, they're all flaked because it's so hot. Last night, I went to bed. And it was meant to be down to 21 degrees last night. When we went to bed, it was still 30 degrees. It was hot and muggy and horrible. So I need to say the portable aircon was on most of the night. Tiger was loving it. As I say, he's a strange cat. He loves the aircon for some reason. You put aircon on, he's there. Sprawled out. On his back, legs in the air. <laughs> so he was loving it. Just flip you over. It's 
So this one is being done on 25 count, uh, no, 28 count easy guys, one over one full cross. In case you were wondering. And this one is 165,550 stitches. And so far I've done 1,097. <laughs> Just a little way to go. Right, next color. somewhere that I hadn't done. So as you remember I mentioned last video that I've got a parcel that I'm waiting for from one of the main shops over here. Still hasn't been picked up. I'm still at the shop. It's like seriously. Been ready for picking up since Sunday. So, if it's not here, well, if it doesn't get picked up by tomorrow, I'm just going to phone him up and ask him if I can cancel the delivery and I'll pick it up myself because I'm going out that way on Sunday. So, we'll see what they say. Hopefully, they can. Yeah, that's a bit bad. Where are the main shops over here? On they can't arrange for a courier to pick something up. I haven't heard anything from the workplace people either. I said it'd probably be about two weeks before they found me up. It was last time. <laughs> So yes, uh, not happy that it's taking so long. As like I say, it's been over a week since I ordered it. And like I say, I got an email on Sunday saying that it had been shipped. And it's like, well, it hasn't. It's still in the store because there's a tracker on it. I can see it's still in the store. <laughs> so yeah, it's a bit bad. I wouldn't mind if it was coming from another side part of Australia, but it's coming from down the road, not far away. <laughs> well, the consensus from you guys on my last stitch with me was to just continue with the 23 projects that I've got well 22 now and get as much work on them as I possibly can and try and focus on a finish or two or if I do need to bring another one in bring in Chief Eagle Spirit 
See, that one's probably about two thirds of the way through. I'll finish that one as well. Especially if I'm having the full six weeks off, I should be able to get some good progress in. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Mm. So we'll concentrate on seeing how far we can get with the ones that I've got. Then any of that I was originally going to bring in because there was two which I've been gifted that I forgot all about. Um, I'll make sure they're like focus pieces for next year or something. Is it going off merrily out there? I had a family of galahs in the tree outside the house this morning. So, there's about five of them, I think. I can tell a fair few of them were babies. I don't know how many babies they have at one time, but there seem to be about three babies with the adults. The babies were all squawking because they wanted feeding. <laughs> I didn't have anything for them. I went to put the bin out this morning as well and the, one of the horses followed me all the way down. I thought he was going to come out the gate. Now we've got a cattle grid on the gate anyway, so he shouldn't come out of there. We come right up to the gate and there's a plank of wood that goes over the cattle grid on one side near where the latch is for the gate so it's, you can walk down it and the horse was you could see he was eyeing it up and thinking hmm I wonder if I can make it over that part I was like no please don't go out because that gate leads onto the main road so then I'm trying to get the horse back in and he, he, didn't, he didn't want to move I was like come on move I want to shut the gate and that took him ages before he moved I mean, he was too busy trying to figure out whether or not he could make it past his cattle grid. So then I had to bribe him with a carrot. <laughs> so I had both horses at the gate waiting for a carrot. And they've got the last two carrots, so if they come back again later on today, they've got none. Because I'm not at work. I'm going to go shopping straight after work on a Thursday. Because Thursday is payday. I'm going to wait till obviously Shane gets home. Because I don't leave Shane to go shopping on his own. Otherwise he comes back with a load of crap. Um, so I'm going to wait till Shane gets home. So we said, well, I don't really need anything urgently today. So we'll just go shopping tomorrow because... We finish early on a Friday. We finish early on a Friday, so it's like, oh, we'll just go tomorrow instead of coming back here and then going out shopping and then coming back again. We'll wait till Friday. Although we're going to be, Shane's going to be coming back here and then going back out again and coming back here, but at least it'll be during the day. And it's going to be stinking hot, so at least we'll be in aircon in the shops, cooling down. I'll be studying the freezer section with the doors open. <laughs> or in the fridge. I might just climb in the fridge. Who knows? Shorter strand than the other one. I think it's many stitches. Right, next, 
as you can see, I'm working per square. So I'm picking each co one color, the color out of each square, the next color, and then working that through, and so forth. So it's a bit like the how Sarah's teaching mummy does it. Anything with this pattern. Apparently it's from a Russian company or something like that. And I don't know why, but they have. Like the symbol I'm doing now, they will have it on the chart like four times <laughs> in some of them. And it's like, it's the same symbol, same color. Why is it all separate? So you, like this one is shown. There's loads of this colour that I'm going to do in this area, but the symbol I just picked it shows one. <laughs> and then I'll have to pick another one. Do that so you can get a bit frustrating. Because you have to keep coming off the colour that you're on to select the one stitch that it's missed or something like that to start it again. So this one just shows one stitch, and well, there's a load more of it down here. Come on, kitty. Throw my arm over the way. I'm trying to get this needle into where it needs to be. It doesn't want to go. Kitty, thank you. Nice, so that's that one. It's the same. Oh, it's not the same color. Okay, for some reason it was showing a different symbol. When I've done that symbol, it's changed to a different symbol. So now I need to find the rest of these. Uh, Confuse an Englishman. Give him a pattern keeper with a pattern that's not compatible properly. Let me just double check there's no more of this around because I've got a big section of it coming up. I want to make sure there's no random one. Nope, doesn't look like it. Right. So I've got some questions which I'll go through in a second, as I mentioned.
something up to I'm in the wrong spot, I thought I was in the wrong spot then. Still got a couple of things to sort out that I'm going to need some giveaways as well. I'm just going to bring in the same hole. Um, I still got to go through and sort those ones out, so there will be some giveaways coming up soon. Don't know how many I'm going to get done. As I say, it's not cheap at the moment with the post and with all the delays internationally in that. that well, I can send it, but whether or not you're going to get in a reasonable time. It's a completely different thing. <laughs> the one I sent the other week, the copy of the Majestic's Tiger chart, has finally left Australia. So that is on its way to Texas. That left the beginning of this week. So it's finally on its way. Is, I'm just working these. I'm going to be working this one per page. <laughs> so this is getting close to the end of the page, which is where the next stitch is going. So this is the end of this page. They're not very wide. One, two, three. Six, just over six. It's not too bad. Not quite as big as the heaven and earth one, but close. Right now, this does run into the next page, so what I'm going to do is do the odd one or two stitches in the next page as well. And just feather this, feathers it in. And prevents him from getting page lines. Well, theoretically, it should prevent me from getting page lines. in a second. Just get this bit to where I need it to. second and I'll find these questions out okay so I just paused the video while I was finding the questions out <laughs> so the first question is from a Jody Um, 
and she enjoyed the pictures at the end of where I live. And the sign I posted was very funny. <laughs> So question, um, when I went home, where did my brother have the fairy that I stitched for my mum hanging? Um, so that was actually in the sitting room. So it was right above my mum's bed next to Mini Deer Creek that I did for him. So they were both next to each other. And he had something else done for him as well. He's got that on there as well. So, yeah, so that's where that one was hanging. Uh, next one is from Jennifer. Uh, I was saying to make sure that I mentioned everyone was due to get the shingles vaccine. I thought this was the other, other stitch with me, not this one, the one before. So just saying to make sure that my mum gets it. So she, yeah, she should have had that on Monday. So hopefully, she's had that one. She was waiting for the nurse. So yeah, so she's had, as far as I'm aware, she's had the, the vaccine now. But I'll find out when I speak to her again on Sunday. Um, next question. It's from Forgetful Red. Who asks if I've shown my, sorry about this. I asked if I'd shown myself in one of my videos, for instance, the size of the Q-snap and the stand that I use. If so, could I direct it to them? Uh, so I have shown the, the Lowry stand. I did like a review of the Lowry stand. Uh, I'll see if I can find that video and I'll link that down below in the description box. Uh, set up like the Q-snaps. I don't just use like one size q snap and use two <laughs> and use either the 11 by 17 or the 11 by 11. um i did show a video of me it was on one of my stitch with me's of how i set it all up for the q snap um i'll see if i can find that one as well and i'll link that one down below for you as well if not i'll have to do you some a new video <laughs> But yeah, I should have some videos already showing how I set everything up on my Q-Snap and uh, a review of the Lowry stand, etc. So, I will uh, try and put those in for you. Next one is from Sue. Who wants to know what is with the headline? Uh, she read today about a missing container of radioactive material in Western Australia. Um, so yes. <laughs> um, and also wants to know if I got the new splint and if it's more comfortable. So yes, so new splint, yes, definitely a lot more comfortable. Um, so yes, the missing container of radioactive material it come out of one of the mines and was being transported down to Perth, I think it was. For, I think it was for disposal, I'm not 100% sure. And it fell off the truck. How it fell off the truck is beyond me. Um, so they were asking everybody to keep an eye out for it and if they see it, to report it, don't go near it. It's highly radioactive, but if it can't be found, then it's going to... like. It's going to take years and years and years for it to become safe. So it's going to destroy the area. So the 
fauna and fauna and animals, etc. So, when they mentioned that, I said to Shane, I said, well, why don't they just go out with a, I think they call it a Geiger counter or whatever, for checking for radioactivity. If it's going to be as strong as the reckon is, they'll pick it up in no time. So, anyway, they went scouring for it. I think it was a 400 kilometer road that they had to go down. Um, so they had people out for days searching and searching for it. And in the end, they went out with a gag counter to find it. Uh, so they have found it. Uh, it was on the news yesterday that they've actually found it now, um, retrieved it. But what have I done here? Where am I? I'm on that row. Oops. I'm not going to frog it. I've put an extra stitch on ND, I shouldn't have done. <laughs> I'm not frogging. We'll just fudge it. It's only one stitch. Um, so yeah, they have found it. But they wanted people to see if they could spot it while they were driving down the road or anything like that. Now, the container that was in question was smaller than a 10 cent piece. So if you see... Let me just move this in. So this is my needle minder. So it was about the same size as the inside of this needle minder. So the part with the picture in. There. So I mean, that's my finger. So you can see how big it is. And that's how big this container was. Roughly, round about that size. Or maybe a little bit smaller. And they wanted people to see if they could spot it while it was driving. It's like, you're not going to spot that <laughs> on the side of a road. So yeah, but yes, they found it, and it was 50 kilometers away from where it set off. But how it wasn't secured on a truck properly, or in a container, or whatever, is beyond me, and was allowed to fall off the back of a truck. But yes, they have found it now. So it's been retrieved, and it's now being taken away to be disposed of, or whatever it is they're doing with it. So yes, it was true. Well, thank you everyone as well for the uh, crochet tips. <laughs> and people to follow on there. As I say, I wanted to get back into doing some crochet again. I used to do that years ago. Now, I never used to start my crochet off. My mum always used to start my crochet off. And then I used to take over and just carry on with it. So I've been trying to work out how to start it off. And, oh, that's been fun. I've been going all wrong and <laughs> haven't done much. I've only done a couple of little squares. So I kept going wrong and all this. Up. So I've now got it sussed with the cards to a magic circle or something it's called <laughs> starting them off because I've run out of videos to watch on YouTube or Flosstube I've actually caught up for a change I've been watching other ways of doing stuff and there's some good patterns out there but they look a bit too tricky for me <laughs> I'll stick to my granny squares for now Next one is from Thorn. <laughs> we said a gecko falling on her would have scared the crap out of her as well. Yeah, it definitely did me. Made me jump out my skin twice. <laughs> and no, that wasn't the one that Tiger got. The one that fell on me was a lot bigger. Off. 
Yeah, the temperature sounds downright icky from over here. Oh, it is downright icky. I mean, yesterday it only got to, I think, 34. Um, but with the humidity and that, they said it was feeling near enough like 40. So in Fahrenheit, was that 80, 112 Fahrenheit, roughly-ish. She says, uh, sounds like I'll probably be having the full six weeks off if the boss had to think hard about uh, giving me, uh, finding light duties for me. So fingers crossed. And she reckons to just continue with my current projects and see if I can get any finishes or page finishes. So she says, since you're off work, are you doing Shane, uh, Shane's shares of housework chores? Well, Shane doesn't do any housework chores. So well, no, I'm not doing his share. <laughs> The only, share, the only chores of anything Shane does is he does the cooking, as I've mentioned. And that's it. He doesn't do anything else. His household chores are putting the grass. And yeah, he does that. He cuts the grass and washes the car when it needs washing. I do everything else. I'm surprised he survived when I was over in the UK. <laughs> I did have to show him how to use the washing machine before I left. Um, oh, the new splint is more comfortable. Yes, definitely. Oh, I see it. Oh, okay. I thought it was a it was an essay about all this stuff on there as well. So. <laughs> That's that one. I think that was the last one. Yep, that was the last question. So I didn't have many. So where are we up to? I don't even know how long this video is so far. <laughs> That. I'll end this thread. I know I could get a couple more stitches, but I'll end this thread here. I'll try and end this thread here. Right. Oops. Next color. Hopefully. Again. Three eight two seven. Three eight two seven. Alright, okay. Again I've got another one. One stitch in one part and then hundreds of stitches over there. Uh, so I've got this colour. Yes. So, I'm going to do this strand, and then by the time I've done this strand, I think it's going to be almost an hour, oh, I'm hoping. That one. And then over to here. It's a bit of a pain when you see with this. I say that's the only part with this chart that. There's my head in. I don't know how many more. 
I like this. We just like the one stitch, but there's actually hundreds of the stitch. I don't think there's many more now. I think I've done most of them. They all seem to be in the first page. Although I've been off all week, I've put some good stitching in on some projects, but other projects I haven't really done much. <laughs> you know, it's like when you get on, on a roll with one project, it's like, oh, I want to do a bit more on that one. I want to do a bit more on that one. Yeah. So, yeah, some projects have got a bit more work in them than others. I've still got two projects that I picked out for this week that I haven't even touched yet. doing this I'll do some more on this project while I'm uploading my stitch with me and then uh, I'll switch out and start one of the other projects for the rest of the evening or day should I say and then tomorrow I'll stitch on the last project and then my brother's piece is gonna come back out that's from Saturday so hopefully I can get back in the swing of that one and get some good work on there. Someone did mention that. Hopefully I can get some good progress on my brother's one now and get back in my stitches. Swing with it. So I'm hoping so. And I'll say I'm near the end of finishing that. First pe uh, first row. So, But then when I come to the second row, I don't know if I'm going to continue with the oil rose method or change it to how I was doing it before. Which was just like... While I'm doing this one, pick a colour and stitch it within until I run out of thread, and then just pick the next colour in the 10 by 10 block. I, th I think it's the Royal Rose ones that's making me not want to work on it. Yes, it's quicker, it's a lot quicker. Put this now, I don't mind having park threads, but there is way too many threads, and like half of them are all the same colour. So yes, and it makes it quicker because I don't have to keep threading the colour every two seconds. But it is annoying. <laughs> so I don't know, I haven't decided yet. I think I'm probably going to switch it out from Royal Rose. I might finish the first row first row in Royal Rose and then go back to my normal method for the remainder of the project. Is what I'm thinking. I was kind of doing the Royal Rose on uh, Post Robin as well. And I've already converted that away from that. And I'm enjoying it. That one a lot better as well. And I seem to have got some good progress on that this week. So yes, yeah, so I have a funny feeling it may be the, the Royal Rose method that's just putting me off. I don't think my attention's right for it. Uh, because I can, I can see column lines. Uh, so it's possible. Poss poss yeah, teeth in. Possibly is my tension too tight for it or something like that. I don't know, but I mean it may not be. It may just be the lines showing through the fabric, uh, through the floss, with it being like floss. But to me, I can see each twenty by twenty, uh, ten by twenty block that I've done. I can see the outline of each one, so I'm not liking it. So I think that's what's putting me off. I'm going to go back and look at it fully as to where I, I started, because that I was just doing cross-country. And see if I can tell the difference. And if I can, then yeah, I'll be swap, switching it out, or switching it back to the way I was doing it. And I'm like working on a project when you're not liking how it's turning out.
I think it's a well meant to be a three year project. I'm in year two of it now, I think. <laughs> so yeah, I really need to get my pointy gear with it. Did I actually put a stitch in there? Yes I did. Stuff. Every shade of yellow brownie colour going. <laughs> it's going to look good once it's done in 20 years' time. <laughs> Mind you, if I just keep working on my projects that I've got, then this could get a fair bit of work in it this year. Especially, obviously, the more I finish, the more that's uh, going to free up space for the other ones. If I don't bring any other ones in, that is. Oh, Dawn as well. Hope you made it to your appointment. She said she had an appointment, but because of all the... There were due a lot of ice and snow, and the place shuts down if there's too much. So hopefully you made it, Dawn. And you got there safely. Nothing worse than having an appointment to the day before you're getting cancelled. That's a pain. Speaking of, I think I mentioned Shane cancelled his appointment for his ears. But now he's only about going back and getting them checked anyway. <laughs> I think I mentioned it last time. He's had no problems with him since, so I think he just had some water stuck in there. And it's obviously worked its way through. Obviously he didn't clean his ears out properly after he'd finished swimming. He's still determined we're getting a paddling, well, some form of paddling pool or something for here. And it's like, why not allow them? <laughs> One of the stipulations of the, the rental is no pools are allowed. Plus over here, you've got to have a pool fence. The landlord, he's not bothered. He said, if you want one, you can put one in. Well, there's nowhere really to put one. Shane's not about putting it under the carport. He said, well, if you put it under the carport, what are you going to do when it comes to having storms and you need to get the car under there? You can't, because there'll be a pool. Idiot. And then it was only about having it behind... We've got, like, a, a hedge near the carport. We're putting it behind the hedge so no one can see it. And it's like, yeah, but there's not really a lot of room behind there. And when it rains... That's one of the first areas I get really bogged down because you've got all the runoff from the carport and that's where the overflow comes out from the, the water tank. So, yeah, it's going to be boggy as anything. And sometimes it doesn't think. I said, plus, I said, with it being so hot, I said, you're going to end up with the birds in it all the time. <laughs> Trying to cool down. Because we put a big tub, plastic tub out full of water for the birds so that they can have a drink and whatever. And then 
last couple of days when I've looked out there, there's been half the beds just diving in it, trying to cool down because it's been so hot. Poor birds are walking around with their mouths open, trying to cool down and panting. Sister Shana said we need a sprinkler for the birds. We have the great water sprinkler, and that's in the in the front yard. So that's all your water from like your washing machine and showers and stuff like that. So when that goes off, you sh all the birds dive under it and fly around. And, oh, they love it when that goes off, but it only goes off for like five minutes or so, and then it stops. And then you've got to wait until it fills up again. So obviously it's not going to fill up while you're not doing any washing. Or having showers. Mm. Yeah, the birds love it when that goes off. I'll sit playing in it. You know, let's get one stitch that's like 10 miles away from everywhere else. Five. Just a random stitch. So, right, guys, I'm going to end this here. So, you can, if you do have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop those down below. Um, you can always email me. Email address, as always, is dizzystitcher at gmail.com. Or I'm on Instagram as dizzystitcher. You can message me on there. If you're in the Facebook group as well, you can message me on that. If you're not on the mes uh, Facebook group and you are, are wanting to join, there are three questions to answer. Answer those and you'll be accepted. Now I have changed the questions on there because of all the scammers that we were getting, as I mentioned in my last stitch with me. So I have changed it so there's more cross stitch related kind of questions. Which may throw obviously the scammers because I'm assuming they don't have cross stitch. I'm assuming. <laughs> so. Come on, Kenny. Last stage. There we go. All right, so let's see what we've done. We've done 214 stitches, so not bad. Let's get in there. <clears throat> Slowly. So it's filling in nicely. It's getting there. I say I'll work on this for a bit longer while this stitch with me is uploading. And I'll switch out to one of my other projects. So that's it for now then, guys. So again, thank you very much for watching. Much appreciated. Um, take care. Stay safe. Happy stitching. And I'll see you in my next video, which will be in the next couple of days, which will be my update video. <laughs> so until then, guys, take care and bye-bye for now.